Good day, folks. It's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. It's been uh, probably a few years people have been asking me for a uh, packet generation tool, a free one and perf preferably one that ran on Windows. So I came across this packet sender app probably a month ago. So I'm not going to profess to be any kind of expert, but I've been playing with it a bit. I kind of like it. So I thought I would take a few seconds to show it to you. It's packetsender.com. I'll put the link right in the article, but I, I'm sure you'll find it. And the website's uh, pretty self-explanatory. Got lots of examples, which is kind of cool. And they've got uh, various versions to download. I, I went and got the Windows one. The uh, Windows one comes in two flavors. There's the portable one and the actual one you install. Now, keeping in the theme of all my portable tools, like iPerf and HRPing and all those tools I've covered in the past, this one can also go on your little troubleshooting USB key or on a folder on a server, that kind of thing. So let's jump right into it. When you run the interface, it's pretty neat because they populate it with all sorts of examples. Once you look at it, it's I think it's evident. I, I don't think there's much of a curveball to learning this interface. It's laid out quite nicely and it's very obvious. I made my own test one right now, testing 123 on port 80. Now port 80 is HTTP. I intentionally did not want an HTTP command. I just want to hit it on port 80 with a little bit of data in the packet so I can search for it in the trace file. And I'm trying to emulate that concept I talk about packet bookmarking, where you send a packet across the wire, you can search for that data, and you can find your packets nice and quick. So this is the, the packet I chose, right? Now, the, the neat thing about it is you can just create whatever you want. So even if I hit this TCP pull down, um, sorry, right up here, pull down, you'll see it says HTTP get post, all that kind of stuff. And, and I didn't want to do that, but it's pretty easy to change if you wanted to. And if you want to load a file, you can actually load a file, all that cool stuff. Again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bore you with this because it's pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Wireshark just to see how it runs. I'm going to do a simple capture filter, host space and the IP address. I'm going to capture on my ethernet, double click. And now if we go to the races, I can see the odd ARP coming out, referencing that, which is kind of good. If I wanted to be a little more specific, I would just do a, a port filter or a combination of IP and TCP port 80. That's fine. That's fine. So I'm going to smooth that aside, come back over here. And if I just hit the send button, off it goes to the races. And if you take a look at your trace, again, this is a great way to learn about packet analysis. So you stop the capture and sure enough, you see my packets. So I can see my machine talking to this 10.1 on port 80. There's my SYN and my SYNAC and my third part of the handshake. Now we got SYN, SYNAC, and ACK. We're good to go. We'll see a push packet from me. And if you look at the length, you'll see 11 bytes in there. And you come down here, you can see testing one, two, and three. Just pull this up just a bit. There you go. You can see it clearly now. Testing one, two, three. Uh, 10.1 comes back and acknowledges my packet. I politely send a fin, ack, fin, ack, ack, and nice shutdown. So there you go, folks. It works. It's obvious. I, again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it because I'm sure you can figure it out. Hope it helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.